Welcome, everybody. I call this meeting to order at 6.33 p.m. We begin, as always, with public input. If anybody has anything they would like to say, please either unmute yourself or raise your hand so I can see you. Seeing none, we move on. No student report tonight for continued business, so we get right into the new business. So, Mr. LaPrette, I see you here. Um, would you like to lead us in? I guess you're the first two things on our agenda. So I'll let you decide if you want to give your update or do the handbook updates first. Great. Thank you, Scott. Uh, nice to see everybody this evening. Uh, Dr. Daly, I believe you have the um, slide show there. I do. Yeah, I'll get that up and use the set. Great. Just confirming that uh, Barry and Alonzo is with us. Hello, Hello everyone. <laughs> Barry and I are going to be presenting uh, the items together this evening. So um, thanks for your patience. So, yes, as uh, Scott said, thank you. Um, we'll look at the handbook first. Nothing dramatic in the handbook, uh, kind of, you know, from the high school's perspective, if uh, Dr. Daly, if you'd go to the first slide, um, you know, after the handbook, we'll talk about uh, the data we've been tracking on the senior final exam exemption, some AP exam data that was received a couple of weeks ago, early July, and then uh, just a bit of an update on our obligations for the New England Association of Schools and Colleges and the self-reflection process that we'll be undertaking this fall. So with respect to the handbook, again, I think the first item that you have there on that chart um, is kind of the global change that will happen with the Title IX updating, uh, and that'll be kind of a district-wide, so I'm not really going to get into that. That's boilerplate changes for um, uh, all handbooks, all schools, etc. cetera. Um, the core value statement, that, that is uh, some subtle changes, some language changes that um, we are, you know, implementing with respect to our kind of a two-year review process. Um, one of the obligations that we have as a school with respect to NEASC anyway is that we are constantly reviewing uh, our language and our mission and our vision and, and things like that with respect to our core values, our beliefs about learning. Um, you know, NEASC, like a lot of things, is, is evolving and changing. And one of the um, ideas they have right now, uh, kind of a foundational piece, is their vision for the graduate. So uh, with respect to the core values, if you would click on that link, sir, The what's in yellow are just some highlighted elements from. Um, so these would not count as substantive changes. Um, and this was uh, the document was shared out with students. It was shared out with faculty members. It was shared out with uh, it was it had feedback from uh, India Barrows, our DEI um, a support person there, um, consultant. The. Uh, School Council had provided feedback on it. So it's just kind of a, what's, what's highlighted there uh, is just some subtle language changes that we feel are appropriate. Um, and again, not substantive per se, but certainly things that update uh, updated that document. Uh, for example, I'll give you a brief example, and I'm, I'm hoping this is one that uh, everyone kind of easily recognizes as a, as a sensible language change. Uh, number eight, under our civic and social learning expectations, the student demonstrates respect and tolerance. Um, we felt that tolerance was kind of a dated term and that we could do a lot better than teaching a, you know, talking about the expectation around being tolerant and what really is the social learning expectation there that we're measuring. Isn't it more like kindness and consideration rather than just tolerance? Um, so that was something that had a lot of, uh, that, 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 that term tolerance had, um, rang with a lot of people like, wow, that seems like a, kind of an interesting term. So I'm hoping that everyone can agree that kindness and consideration uh, would trump tolerance. 
so those again, subtle changes. Yes, Noel. Hi there. Um, I was just um, curious. I, I I'm trying to read this on my screen, and I, do we have a copy of this that we could look at on our own screens? In in the um, agenda, I, I would, the the link that I would think would bring it up just brings out up as a specific call out on absences and makeup work. Um, so try. So is the present. Is it's in the second. Else? Yeah, it's number uh, two. It's in number two. Yeah. But it's oh, Dr. Okay, Dr. thank Daly. you. It's Dr. Daly. The only thing thank is when you, you click all. on that, when you click on that link that says core values, it says at least for me, I'm, I don't have access. Okay. If you want to. It's not. I can try to. I can try to update those for you now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have access either. Okay. Should we come back to that? Do you want to keep going, and then maybe that we'll can circle back to that once you've had a. Sure. Um. I. I yeah. Sure. I just like to look at things myself, and I'm blind. Yeah. I wish I could see on my screen, but I don't have. Yeah. If you. Goggles. That's the other thing. This is. It's pretty big. Like you can pin it on your screen. It should take up most of the screen. Okay. All right. I'll keep trying. So like on my screen, I have it pinned, and it takes up. It's. It's. Pretty. Pretty big. But I'll also try to figure out what's going on with the permissions. It's, yeah, I think it's that's not right. Jennifer, you're on the you're not on your school email, so it might not be opening for you. If I if I heard that you weren't able to. Oh, uh, okay, that's why. Okay. Yeah. You, I, I, I saw that one. If I'm the only one that can't see it and get into it, that's fine. I, the other ones I see, like peer mediation, opening for me in the in the drive, so we're fine. So, so yeah, why don't we just go go through a couple of these others and then we'll come back if, you know, yep. if that makes sense. Um, so, Barry, Ann, do you want to speak about peer mediation? I think you're muted. Yep. Um, so <clears throat> we are starting some peer mediation training this summer with um, this program called School Mediation Associates. Associates. And um, we had... Myself, it's the middle school and the high school, but I'll just speak for what the high school's um, intentions are. We had um, two adults, it's myself and Ms. Tropiano, who is um, the person who works in the bridge room. So it's really a natural con counseling flow for her. We have 10 students who will be the peer mediators, although we did have four applicants. So we took the, the remaining four as alternatives because um, as alternates, I mean, because we you know, somebody could be absent or it could be too close for comfort for them. Um, we are trying to get more ways to build and maintain the community, to empower the students, to help them establish skills as like as such as deep listening and um, problem solving. So we're really hopeful that we have a three-day training coming up, um, mm -hmm. April 26, 7, and 8th. And during that training, it, it's I have the agenda. It's pretty intensive. But they're going to learn about the the importance of mediation, um, the importance of confidentiality. They'll learn about um, how to ask questions that are not accusatory, but rather you know open ended to get people to talk about their how they're feeling. And um, we're just really excited to give some of this over to the students and have their voice be heard. Any questions? Yeah, and just to follow up on that, right, with the idea that we're always looking to offer slash implement additional alternative remedies for situations that in many cases might, um, you know, uh, end up with some kind of disciplinary consequence, yet that may not be the only solution, right? There might be other opportunities here, and uh, certainly this is is one of those uh, strategies that we're trying to implement. I, I just have one question real quick. So we're talking about handbook changes. Is this going to be in the handbook or is this just part of the updates? It's in the handbook because it's part of the alternative remedies under okay. discipline. And so so that we don't have to, you know, 
we like our reputations. We want to stay the friendly people we are. So we want the students to start to take some of this ownership of holding each other accountable and um, what that really looks like to make real change. So it's going under the discipline as an alternative remedy. Okay. Right. We wouldn't want to have a situation where we say, well, we're putting in, you know, we're, we're um, directing this situation to peer mediation. And then the parents say, well, what's, you know, I don't even see that in the handbook. Um, and then we also thought it was wise to, it, you know, add language that said, basically, you cannot pick your mediator, right? Your mediator has to be somebody who's gone through the program. You can't, you can't kind of show up and say, oh, yeah, by the way, I bought my, my best friend. He's going to mediate this, uh, this discussion for us. <laughs> so that's, that's basically the only, you know, we're adding that language to say this program exists. All right, Dr. Daly, what is next on our list? I am seeing absences, make up, yes, make up work. This is just clarification. The language that you see that's not highlighted, that's all right out of the, um, the school policy language that you know is unchanged. All we're doing is we're just adding that consistent with the policy as defined on page 52. Um, and then item four, that while we want advanced notification, just trying to reemphasize with parents that calling up to say, hey, you know, we're going to be on a, you know, AAU nationwide tournament in, in um, Atlanta for the next four days. And, you know, my child's not going to be in school. That's it's not an excused absence. Uh, and that the, you know, uh, expectations around missing work and things like that are uh clear for the parent and the student or the caregiver and the student. So again, just kind of uh, another another reemphasis of the rule, nothing changed, so to speak. Then of course we updated the, um, the user fees. That, there's no link there to that. It's just the new numbers. Uh, happy to go back to the core values again if you want to you know, anytime you want to, you know, connect on that. No. Okay. It's, it's fine with me. I mean, I just, I would say in the future, but Mr. LaCroix doesn't care too much about the future for next year because he will be retired. Oh, by come on. He'll be retired by then. And you won't be the one that has to do this next year. But, but, uh, um, caring. Yes. What would, what would be helpful is just to have the, you know, maybe the full uh, handbook with the changes redlined in there. But, I feel comfortable with all the changes as presented. Um, if these are only, does the committee have any questions or comments on, on the changes for the handbook? Hearing none, no. does somebody want to make a motion? Dr. Tim, question or comment? No, I, I actually, I mean, I applaud the changes to the core values. I think that was a really great change. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. And I like the idea of peer mediation as well. So, uh, Tim, do you want to make a motion to accept the um, edits for the handbook for 2024-2025? Sure. I, uh, I move to accept the 2024-2025 handbook amendments as written. Second. Second. I have a motion. We have a second. Since we're virtual, we have to do a roll call vote for everything. Mr. Tim. Buckley, just a question. Yeah, no, no, no. Dr. Daly? Just, Mr. LePage, just to double check that the slides that follow about the senior exemptions, there's no changes to that, it's just an update? Correct, yeah, that's just data. Okay, so this these are all, this would be all of the handbook edits as presented, okay. Correct, correct. Yeah, that was my understanding. Um, okay, we have a motion from Tim, we have a second by Noel. Tim? Aye. Noel? Aye. Jen? Aye. I'm an aye as well, passes four zero. Thank you very much. Mr. LaPrat, continue Thank on. You. Next slide, please. So as you know, uh, we've been um, practicing uh, under this uh, idea of a senior final exam exemption. Um, we, this was our third straight year in doing this. Um, and what we have here is to, the next couple of slides are just a language around you know, the qualifications, so to speak, um, and the, 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 the idea behind it. If you want to advance, Patrick. Mm -hmm. So none of this has changed. This is all the same language. The, the uh, let's say, next slide, please. So 
as you can see here, so this 23, 24, we had our two year pilot program. And, you know, so my, my hope was that we could look at the, the most recent year kind of first and see some information um, and see some data. Uh, this was a small senior class, I think, as you know, kind of just a uh, kind of a, you know, a weird uh, anomaly, so to speak. Um, so naturally, we had fewer exams uh, overall. And you can see that um, we had, you know, data that I think reflects that it's an important thing that kids generally like it. I think anytime you can you can uh, offer a student an opportunity to say, you know what, I, I've really mastered the material and I do not need to take the final. Uh, that's a good thing. Um, you know, one of the uh, things that kind of stood out is you can look at that eligibility. Uh, students with at least one exam that they were exempt from, that number dropped quite a bit. And you can see the correlation there is that attendance. And again, this goes back to changing that or re not changing, I, I, I apologize, uh, emphasizing the language around attendance and attendance as a requirement. Uh, a number of students did not, uh, did not, um, were not eligible because they had too many absences. Um, and I think you can kind of see that, you know, how that exemption uh, minimum, you know, uh, of students that had at least one dropped. And you can kind of see, like, well, there's the there's where it shows up on the other side, on the attendance side. The discipline uh, piece is, again, nice to see that that stays nice and low. Um, but we really are emphasizing attendance. Um, and we do. I mean, I, I met with I met with seniors probably four times to review this. Uh, say from November through April, and kept reminding them of the, of the fact that you know this is this is one of the uh, requirements that you meet this attendance attendance requirement. Um, but again, I think overall the program is working, um, and I think there's some there's some evidence in the next uh, couple of slides when we talk about AP exams that I think talk about you know how. We're seeing success there, and therefore, while you know, one year we have a dip in, in kind of um, overall exemptions, I think we're on the right track with this idea. So, any specific questions around the data that we have here? Any questions, anybody? Or comments? Sure, yeah. Dr. Daly? Just to, I, if, if I'm looking at this correctly, I actually think there might be a, an error in the 21-22, and so I think your numbers Last year was very high, but I think it's uh, the 110 of 162 is is not quite 90. So I think it's actually a little higher. You know, so this year is sort of the middle year there. If I'm looking at the yeah, that's interesting. I did not, I didn't catch that. So I think, I think it's. Uh, I'll look at that again for yeah, sure. It seems to be trending that way. I mean, last year was really high. Yeah. Um, but but the the 92, you know, the the 92 is similar to the 110, I think. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and I mean, with, with that in mind, it's the attendance that really is hurting it. So Mr. Sutherland. I was just going to ask, was there a root cause for the attendance? I mean, that's quite a stark jump from year to year. Yeah. You know, um, I, unfortunately I, I cannot speak, you know, to something easily identifiable other than there were, um, I think students that struggled getting to school on time. And there were phone calls and there were meetings and there were, you know, there were a number of steps that were taken to uh, try to address this. And, you know, we, we did not see the improvement we were hoping for. I know that Mrs. Alonzo was very involved in, in many discussions with students around attendance. OK, so this wasn't kids had the flu or a bunch of unfortunate sicknesses that. OK, all right. 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 These are unexcused absences. Oh, oh OK. You and it's important that this is by, you know, this is by by course. So if you missed that class, um, you know, because it was a morning class, you know, you missed the class uh, and therefore you had to take the exam. So uh, you may have been exempt from other exams, but certainly not that one. I, I mean, just overall, I, I, I support this policy. I think it's a good policy because it does help seniors to you know get a little bit of a reward if they do a good job during the year but also you can see it keeps people coming to school even if you know 
you know, at the end of senior year and people might want to not show up, this, you know, there's an encouragement to continue coming. So I think it's a, a good policy where you tie the attendance to one of the requirements. So. No, thank you. I appreciate that. I think it's, it, it, certainly the feedback from the students is very positive. Yeah. Staff as well, Mr. LaPrette? Yes. Okay. Yes. You know, when we talk about, so we talk about calculation day. So whatever, you know, we pick a Wednesday, essentially the, you know, the Wednesday, the week and a half before the last day for seniors. And if you were eligible on, on that day, then you're eligible. It's not, not retroactive. You can't then lose your eligibility because you happen to be, you know, absent one day in the last four days. Is, you know, so it, 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 it works. And it, I think it has worked. And again, I, I appreciate the, um, you know, the attention to some of the data that, that, you know, just uh, really stands out and, you know, and our, and our goals for addressing it, you know, with the coming seniors. We have a meeting with them uh, in a couple of weeks, the senior class leadership. So it's definitely on the agenda. Great. Thank okay, you. so our AP exam data set up, set up, you know, similarly in the, this, this year is the, the kind of the first column that you see. Um, and, you know, I couldn't be more proud. We, last year, we celebrated the fact that we had, you know, 81, essentially 81% of the students got um, threes or better, and we went up to 85. And, and that's with an additional course. Uh, we had AP Art added into our... Um, uh, our program, our AP course offerings this year. Uh, so just a tremendous, uh, tremendous effort from uh, from the students and the faculty uh, to have that. A again, more exams overall and higher scores overall. Um, and, and, and Mr. LaPrat, the one thing that you're not even emphasizing on this is if you combine the last slide with this, there's 50 fewer seniors this year. That's right. And yeah. There well, were six more. There were six the, next, more. the next slide speaks to that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, just po pointing out how great that is when you're looking at the percentages. Um, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I appreciate that. And I think if you look at, so now we kind of broke it down by grade and keeping in mind that for those sophomores, the last two years, you had uh, two more course offerings rather than just the uh, AP Environmental Science. You could take AP US History or AP uh, Computer principles so you can see the numbers of you know total total seats per se of sophomores from 21 uh, 22 of 14 students taking uh, an ap uh environment apes exam up to 40 and now 45 and then you can kind of see that you know as a as a sophomore right you know 40 students took an ap course and now am i ready for what that looks like and you can see that kind of reflects in that 86% for those 162 kids. I, I like to think that that's, you know, that's, that's a piece of that, the experiential uh, component. Yeah, my, 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 own, my only other comment on AP, which is not specifically on the scores overall, but well, I guess, I guess on the scores in particular, one thing that people, the school committee has prided itself on a lot over the last few years is that we encourage the high school to allow people to take it. There are a lot of there are a lot of districts where they really only want the top students taking AP courses because it helps their scores a little bit more. But I I, I appreciate that the the goal set from the top in North Reading has been to challenge all students, and so you know allowing everybody to take them if they feel up to that challenge. Um, the only the only thing that I still think we should look at even more is the possible limits on AP courses so that we're not overburdening students, especially, I mean, I know last year or a few years ago, we put in place the restriction on how many courses could be taken as a senior. And I do think that's an important thing to look at, or at least say how many can be weighted where you get extra credit for doing them just so that we're not overly taxing people where everyone's trying to, you know, cram in as many as they can, but, I think it works, and you can see even with that small, small limitation, there's still more exams being given. Thank you. No, I think that's an excellent point. And, it, um, you know, it, not enough data on this per se, but, you know, you like I, maybe that element that knowing for a student, knowing that the cap is there, 
kind of collectively takes the pressure off everybody to feel like they have to see who else is doing what or how many are you taking or, well, you know, there's a cap. So we're really not going to, you know, uh, peel it back too much. But ideally, I'm taking the right number from me and I can use the cap as, you know, as some cover. So um, bad pun. I get it. But, uh, you know, I, I'd like to think there's a little bit of that there. Yeah. And, and, and I would just say, I mean, one parent had reached out to me this year about a student wanting to take more than the cap. And my suggestion had been, well, if they really want to take that course, what if it's just not weighted? And when it wasn't weighted, they didn't have the same desire to take that course. <laughs> and so, I yeah, think, uh, yeah. I, I just think making sure that everybody's eligible to, you know, we want people taking them, but at the same time, we don't want, you know, to overwhelm students when this other yeah. things that are important in education as well, other than just the exams. No, I appreciate that. And, it, and again, I think uh, it's something that I think we would all agree. The last thing certainly I want is a, is a student to, to leave on departing the high school, say, yeah, but the school didn't let me or the school didn't allow me to. Um, and that is uh, it's a hard, uh, you know, kind of a line to toe. But um, I think we're in a good place. So, uh, sir, if you would advance, I think we're into, yes, we're into our uh, NEASC slides. So I'm going to let Mrs. Alonzo take it over from here, but there are, you know, just some kind of foundational docs that are uh, offered here and then our kind of overall timeline and obligation. Okay, so um, I need you guys to visualize an iceberg. And on the top, it's just this little thing. That'll be in 2027, all of our success. But underneath is this huge, huge, huge effort that has already begun that will try to keep us on track um, so that we can manage this, this really huge undertaking. So to start with, these are the standards that we have to speak towards and prove that we are, are doing well in. So the learning culture, the student learning, the professional practices, um, the learning support, and then the resources. And if you take the time to read through those, you know, we're very fortunate that a lot of us, a lot of those, we can check the boxes. We have a new school. We have, um, you know, a great environment in the school. So a lot of these boxes, we're going to be able to check and, and really be able to show off how awesome um, North Reading is. But we started with, um, in this past spring, we started with the curriculum prep. So we had to make sure that all of our curriculum content um, is in the same format for their easy read so that they can inventory it so that they can know this is, we have it all. If you wanted to go to the next slide, Dr. Daly, then they could follow along with this. Um, and then in April, we had um, a, an online kind of training, Mr. LaPrette, myself and Ms. Caulfield. Um, we met and we had to do the orientation, get all of the timeline ready, um, we got assigned our liaison in September we'll, of this year. We'll be meeting with um, her and she'll be coming to the school to do some professional development um, and training orientation for the, for the entire faculty. And then um, we have built in, in our faculty meeting, department meeting, leadership meeting, rotation, we've built in the other meetings because we know it's going to be very time consuming and finding time where everybody can meet is tricky. So we've alternated some of the stuff that we've done in that um, because it becomes, um, it's, a, it's top heavy. We need to get a lot done at the beginning. And so then if that's done correctly, then we can just flow right into um, everything else. And then, so this fall is the self-reflection. And so every single staff member has been assigned to a standard and we they will go through that standard and pull out evidence of what we're doing well and maybe where we need to to work on and then the um steering committee will write the report um we have our collaborative conference in sometime in 2025 i, I understand mr lepret's going to come back for that that'll be great um <laughs> And then that is when we have a team of people come in and they, they look at 
if we told the truth in our self-reflection and they say, oh yes, this is this is exactly what you guys said you were doing and we have evidence of it. And oh, we noticed this um, area for growth over here. And they give us back their, um, their feedback and we take their feedback and um, apply it so that we can in 2027 have our accreditation. I believe that that is the simplest way to explain it. And Mr. LaPrette, how did I do? I think you did very well. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to offer this though, because I'm a visual guy. So uh, Patrick, if you don't mind scrolling up to the top of this uh, document. So you, that, that is a, uh, that visual is kind of right off of the NEASC website. Yeah. And so again, it's, it's, it's your school's accreditation. Um, we want to be an accredited school. The, I think in the past, there was a, pers a perspective that NEASC has always kind of had to deal with. I think in that, uh, you know, um, NEASC is something that's done to you, you know, as opposed to with you. Um, and this, this is kind of a newer, more collaborative model. And I think the idea from this is that uh, it's a more productive model because, uh, you know, NEASC is more accessible, more available, and, you know, supportive rather than just assessing. Uh, so I think that's, you know, if you can kind of, as you, as you look at this visually, you're kind of getting that sense of, you know, we're, we're doing our self-reflection. We're going to have a collaborative conference that I served on a collaborative conference in a nearby school last year solely to kind of make sure I knew um, the process. Uh, I shouldn't say solely. That was a big part of it. I wanted to be a good colleague and a good uh, uh, team player for other, other administrators in other schools. Um, but there was a selfish element to it, I'll admit. Uh, so having done that, and then again, the, the, the team from NEASC wants to come in and say, you, you educators have the pulse of what you need and where you are. We just need to know, you know, the, you, you're on top of this. Uh, what do you do well? What do you know you need to improve in? Um, and it would be odd that the committee, a visiting committee, didn't see those things um, or, or had trouble identifying them from a self-reflection report. So I think we're in a good place. Uh, we've got a great team with respect to our steering committee and then our self-reflection committee. Um, you know, uh, when Barry Ann and myself and Michelle Caulfield went through that orientation process, I think we all very quickly agreed, like, there's a couple of ways that this can go. And the whole faculty model is the is the easiest, uh, most sensible way to go. Why we wouldn't, why, why we would say that a faculty member really didn't need to worry about this uh, made no sense to me. So, um, you know, I think uh, I think we're in a good place. I think we're in a good place and our schedule looks good and our, um, you know, our early steps are, are right where they should be. So I just have one quick question. So sure. I, I, I looked up uh, the decennial to realize that was every 10 years. I know the frequency of it. But my, my question is, if, if anybody recalls, were there any issues that were found the last time when we were looking for accreditation that are areas that we need to make sure that we're on top of or things that I don't know, maybe they say this is OK sure. right now. But, you know, like, like when you get your car inspected, they say, oh, your tires are OK, but they're, you probably need them in the next six months. Were there any, was there anything identified in the last one that we have to be particularly cognizant of? So excellent. That's an excellent question. Um, and so I will say kind of that transition, I, I was the assistant principal in 2014. And then when the accreditation team came through, I became the principal. So I was kind of, you know, uh, on the one side of the report and then dealing with it, uh, uh, on the other side. So we did, so you, what, what can happen, um, and depending on what the, uh, collaborative conference, you know, um, determines or identifies or writes in, writes in their report and then what the what the accreditation team writes in their report, they can put you on what like a two year growth plan and say, you know, th this is an area we want to see some follow up on in two years. Um, so I, I did end up writing uh, a couple of um, reports as a two year follow up back in 2016, 2017, 2018. I think we probably submitted it in 2018. Um, and again, those were those were things that I think were were 
honestly just kind of student participation things or uh, I mean, at that time, our our numbers were very high. Our um, enrollment was quite high. Um, so there were some concerns about how are we making sure that students are connected and not that that's not a concern um, on any given day in the school that we make sure students are connected. But I think they saw kind of ballooning numbers, you know, on a trend that, you know, they felt like, OK, do you have the capacity for this? Um, so we had implemented some surveys and that's become, you know, part of something that we've kind of we've done regularly. Um, so there were steps that we've taken to kind of address those things. But I do I do appreciate the question. I will also say, however, that the standards changed. So the standards that we used back in, you know, in our in our decennial accreditation back in 2014 were the 2010 standards. Now we're on 2023 standards. So the, the language is a little different. Um, but again, I don't see. I don't see anything that I don't see any surprises. I think we know what we would like to see get you know improve, um, and I think that will very much be identified and reflected in our reports. Okay. Anybody else have comments or questions on the update? Okay. All Thank right. You very much, Mr. Lopret and Ms. Lonzo. Thank you. I, I believe that's our last slide. Yep. Just a thank you slide after. Okay. Okay. And we don't need any vote on this one, so we're all set. Thank you very much. All right. Nice to see everybody. You too. Enjoy your summers. Thank you. Okay. You so thank before, you. We, before we go to evaluation, is Mr. Clean here? Is he coming later on, Dr. Daly? So I was going to present on that one. It might be a good one to do next. I'm not sure if some other people are, are here for that. So. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We do the math intervention part next, and we do the evaluations after that. Yeah. So it's my understanding. Uh, oh, I'm not sharing. Uh, one second. Is that showing up there? It's coming out. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this is similar to what we've done in the past, um, where there's an opportunity for some staff members to participate in a in a study. Um, students would be involved as well. Um, so this this would be an innovation uh, an intervention focus in grades three to five. The teachers would be responsible for the interventions. Um, it would involve some teachers and uh, our Title I tutors um, at the little school in the hood. Um, and there's a couple of um, special education teachers at the batch. And so they would either be a treatment or a control group. So, you know, as always with this piece, there are uh, opt outs for students. All this information is shared home with the families um, from the district. I think Mr. Clean would probably communicate this out. If not, it would be the principals. Um, and there, there is an opt-out option, obviously, for any kind of a, a participation or, or survey. And so, you know, we do get um, important information from this data and from these surveys. And, you know, we're a part of ongoing educational research. The teachers do get some compensation for their participation as well. Um, so I'm wondering if there's any questions about it. But again, it is completely voluntary. If if uh, students don't want to participate, they just will not be a part of this program. So I guess my questions are, first, what's the cost of the program itself? And then second, when, what's the timing of this? Like, when is this done? Is it early in the year? Is it later in the year? So I'm not exactly sure. I don't think that I don't believe there's any cost, and I am not sure of the timing. Um, I believe it's earlier in the year. I probably can find that out in just a second. I think that's why he wanted to get it on tonight, though, because um, because of the timing. I mean, if there's no cost to it, I don't think time, timing changes my vote in any way. I'm not, I'm supporting it, but I was just more curious. Um, yeah, I think it's earlier in the year because. Um, I'm trying to see if I can get an actual date, but I know he wanted to get it on this agenda to get it to get it rolling. 
And would all students, so would all students just take a test and then if they're identified as needing extra help, they would be in the treatment group? So the teachers are participating in the professional development, I believe. Okay. And then the interventions are being put in and then they're looking at to see whether there's different outcomes with the student results based upon whether the teacher participated in the professional development. That's my understanding of this. So they're trying to find out whether this course can help teachers improve the intervention practices. So again, we're, we're doing intervention practices all the time at all schools to help students. This is just an opportunity for us to get some free professional development and to see whether it's effective. And the students that are involved are going, you know, some are going to get specialized instruction, some won't, will not. Um, if it's, if it's, we see the benefits, we would then be able to offer this to more staff in the future. And again, there's no requirement for students to participate and um, all privacy is protected. It's only for research purposes, never shared outside of the team and all records are destroyed. And this, all this information is sent to parents to, to view, so. Okay. Anybody else have questions? Mr. Sutherland. Do you know where the stipend comes from? Is this through this program? Is it through this grant or is this? I believe it's coming from West Ed. So um, West Ed is the, the provider of this. Let me see if there, I thought I read about that. I'm trying to Google it now, but that's not proving helpful. Yeah, WestEd is a, a research um, agency. Right. Um, let me see if I can find that doc. Any other questions while we're waiting here? <clears throat> okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't switch my screen, did I? But well, you're still you're showing the math intervention research document, right? Yeah. So this is this is the one I I want to be sharing. Yeah. <clears throat> so it comes from Westad. Okay. So it's it's to compensate the teachers for their time to participate in the PD, um, and to and to participate and to do the work. So. And we've done similar studies in the past. We did something with biology in the last two years that uh, some teachers have participated in. And, you know, we always like to get school committee approval whenever we're doing any kind of a study. It's, it's in alignment with our policies. And the typical questions are, are typically about privacy and opt out, you know, making sure students have the ability and families have the ability to opt out, as we always do with any kind of studies. I, I don't believe there's any data being collected from students. There's no surveys. They are just uh, participants if they opt in. Okay, so there's no cost to the district. There's potentially benefits to the teachers in particular, maybe students as well, and students Correct. can opt out if they're not interested in it. So, Correct, uh, that's my I yep. I don't have any other questions. Anybody else have questions? Do we have a concept of how many students would potentially be participating in this? That's what I'm trying to, I, I'm gathering that it's just, um, you know, a small groups at two um, different schools. Actually, at, at all three elementary schools in grades three to five. So I, I based on what I was told, I would assume it might be open to uh, multiple students at all three schools from grades three to five. But then there are, um, it looks like four teachers that are directly to be involved in this. Good. And Mr. Colleen, by the way, was, he's on vacation. He was trying to join us, but his internet connection was pretty weak. So he gave me the information to present. I, and, you know, hopefully that's uh, sufficient. But if yeah. you need more, I can, I can get some follow-up questions as well. I'm fine with with approving, but if there's no other question, somebody want to make a motion to approve? Not all at once. I can, I can try it. I, I, but you, put, you brought my screen in, so I uh, motion to approve the West Ed Math Intervention Program for the 2024-2025 school year. 
Perfect. Second. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. So we'll vote. You got to stay consistent for Cindy, Tim. You got to do it now. Oh, man. There you go. <laughs> this is what I get with Jeff not here. God. Yeah. Okay, Tim. Hi. Noel. Hi. Jen. Hi. I'm an I as well. Passes 4 0. And I will really see the lack of Jeff here. It'll be a much quicker, uh, possibly a much quicker evaluation uh, <laughs> summary, but. I'll turn the floor over to you, uh, Noel, to lead us through. Are we doing both the superintendent and the school committee this time, too, or not? Um, so we talked about it. First of all, I can be verbose if I want to. Um, <laughs> but, um, anyhow, what we had talked about um, was because we wanted to get Dr. Daly's completed. We wanted to go through that tonight. And as you all know, you had the opportunity um, to input your feedback into the document um, over the last week. And then I think the plan was we would review, um, Dr. Jill, you can, you can remind me here if I'm not correct, but we were gonna sort of review what the school committee goals are um, currently, um, but we have a goal setting workshop coming up next month. Um, so we thought it would be productive to review the um we'll go over dr daly's evaluation review the school committee goals um and then we're going to be revisiting goals next school committee meeting is that correct correct and bef before that meeting is the goal setting for next year so you still want to talk about it a little bit tonight think about where you are um maybe get a little bit of input from everyone so you can be thinking about that and then you're sort of completing that document between now and the next meeting so right, when, you we'll the, when you go into the workshop, you're, um, you know, you're, you're really thinking about if it's been met, what should change for next year, what needs to continue. And then we can have that discussion on, the, on that later that day. So. Okay. So um, do you want to share it, uh, Dr. Daly, the, um, the summit of evaluation, or do you want me to share it? E either or. Uh, let, let me know. I can uh, share what you sent me. Let's see. You're probably faster than me because I don't use Google Meet that much. All right. I'm happy to share. I'm right here. Okay. I don't think any non-educators do. <laughs> I do use it, but I don't like share a lot during it. I just use it for like quick chats. And so I'm not used to sharing. Um, Should be up there. Okay. And actually, I am going to, because I can't see anything, I'm going to open it up myself. Um, just give me a second, if you don't mind. Is, is it up? I'm, I have my screen closed. Let's see. Yes. Everything is slow tonight. Okay. Sorry, I'm just opening up my own copy so I can read it. There it is. Okay, so you you will recognize some of Jeff's language is still in place. <laughs> in place here. But um, so this is the summative evaluation, which is um, uh, the conclusion of, of two years of evaluation. Last year, we had the formative evaluation. Um, so just um, I will go through this kind of point by point. Um, but again, um, this is something that, um, Dr. Daly, you have to share this out relatively quickly. Is that right? To For your own personal evaluation? Yes, we report all of the evaluations for the district in early August. So um, that's why okay. we needed this one tonight. Okay. We okay. report it to the So um, I just think, uh, yeah, okay. So, so um, I think that it, this is, um, you know, I, I, Jeff, Jeff wrote a lot of this, but we have, we're lucky in that we are evaluating someone who has been really, you know, exceptional in my mind and I think in everyone's mind. So um, 
we're re- going through this, it's really meeting or exceeding all of the goals um, that you had laid out for yourself. Um, but um, some of the highlights um, that we um, discussed were um, staff. Um, obviously, over the past year, we had um, multiple um, back-to-back negotiations um, with both the paraprofessionals and the teachers, um, and just maneuvering that successfully um, and working both with um, the school committee and with the um, the reps and just uh, as we know, one of the one of the negotiations was a little longer, took a little bit more effort than the other, but they were both successful. Um, both, I believe, from the um, the staff feedback and um, the 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 public as well. The feedback from um, the public to the school committee uh, was positive um, in wanting to you know have these negotiations resolved, especially looking at districts around us where we've had a lot of um, a lot of conflict. And so it's been kind of North Rings a little bit been been the envy of of different districts around us. Um, and um, the um, other thing that we we highlighted here is just like the huge amount of success with the um, extracurriculars, athletic, music, performing arts, um, high, just having that be something that is important within the district. Um, and Dr. Daly really, um, you know, giving giving a lot of weight to that. And um, Dr. Daly shows up at a lot of these events, and I know a lot of superintendents would not do that. And so it's just, you know, the district's been successful, but I think it's because of um, Dr. Daly's focus on the importance of, you know, the well-roundedness of the schools. Um, let's see, going to um, just a little review of academics. Um, North Reading is consistently outperforming state averages. Um, we have currently a lot of AP classes that um, available for kids that want to participate. Um, and they, um, as we were just talking about a few minutes ago, there are a limit to those AP classes um, with a nod to um, student wellness and you know avoiding the um, burnout that can happen. Um, and we also spoke a little bit tonight about the, the conflict re- resolution um, that has been successfully introduced and starting to explore different methods there for conflict resolution. Um, so obviously now the big challenge in front of us as a district and Dr. Daly as a superintendent, of course, is working within the limits of the failure of the budget override um, to pass. So it's going to be a challenge for the whole district, but especially for the team um, in Dr. Daly and um, and and just the rest of the administrative team and trying to guide guide them moving forward here. So. I think we're in good hands in terms of what's to come um, in um, what, you know, we see as an unfortunate um, situation with the budget um, override. Um, So I'm not going to read through all of these in detail, but um, unless anyone wants me to, but I would say that just going through, um, it was easy to see that um, Dr. Dilley's met or exceeded his goals in um, in every area, and there are really four um, performance areas that um, are evaluated: um, instructional leadership, um, management and operations, family and community engagement, and um, professional culture. And those are all really we found Dr. Daly to be exemplary in um, in his performance of of those standards. Um, so I will, um, elaborate anywhere in particular, or if anyone has any questions or comments, anecdotes, um, by all means. I, I'll, I'll just jump in and say that it's been, you know, a pleasure working with Dr. Daly for the last couple of years. Um, I agree with the comments. I think he's done an excellent job. I think a lot of different areas. Um, I, I think I'm sure he'll be the first to say that a lot of his successes are team successes because he has a wonderful administration, you know, administrators that work with him. Um, I think 
what everybody doesn't know, and I won't elaborate too much here, but um, you know, I think a lot of other districts appreciate the administration that we have too, since people try to make offers to our people every once in a while as well. And so I think it just um, says a lot that uh, about the level of people that he has helped develop over the past few years and that they want to stay here too, you know, for a long period of time. And so I think, you know, leadership more than anything shows when you, you have retention of, of staff. And so we have a lot of great administrators who are very qualified in their jobs that, you know, could very easily take other jobs in other districts, but choose to stay here. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with Dr. Daly. I think from a financial perspective, like, again, we did the best we could last year to put out what the financial challenges were and let the community decide whether we would have an override or not. But I think there was a lot of work that was needed in order to get those numbers together, first and foremost. Now, I'm sure Mr. Connolly gets a lot of the credit in that, but you know, there are hard decisions that had to be made about if we have, you know, you know, we, we have a pie that's not growing, but what we needed to grow to, grow, you know, grow with to, you know, keep the same level of staffing. And so I thought Dr. Daly did an excellent job in, you know, working with all the administrators and the principals to try to figure out where we could cut if we, you know, were going to be making cuts. I thought he handled it very, very professionally with the people that were being laid off because as we've been seeing in these last couple of meetings, the layoffs have happened. And so there are people that are out of jobs that had jobs last year. And, you know, I think he's handled that very well also. And I think his communication has been excellent. Um, you know, during COVID, we saw his communication skills, I think, shine. And I think it's, you know, continued to happen here. Um, as an employee of the of the district, he has to be very careful and you know not advocating for things, but more just educating people about the numbers. Um, I thought he did an excellent job on a lot of webinars, on you know smaller group settings where we you know chatted with people, and so it was a, a new challenge that we haven't faced um, as much. I mean, a lot of times we have challenges trying to figure out you know you know the budgets, but this was a particularly challenging. Um, cycle and the next couple will be as well. So overall, I was very happy with with Dr. Daly's performance in the last couple of years and give him kudos on everything. So thank you very much, Dr. Daly and Mr. Connolly and all the other administrators that work with him. I would just like to, I'll just add one thing. Um, just watching over the last few months, I've only got to work closely with you for the last few months. And fortunately, it's been during a very difficult time, but I was really impressed how you educated everyone, helped us navigate our way through this and are confident that even though the override didn't pass, that you'll be able to help navigate us through what's to come. So just working with you closely for the last couple months, but my first interaction with you ever was during COVID when you were um, driving around looking for a house number and I stopped you and it was my house you were looking for to personally deliver my uh, my kindergartner's Chromebook. Um, and so I, I, I knew right away that we were, we were in good hands and we continue to be, so thank you. I didn't know you were going to run for school committee. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, co coming in, you know, 95% of the way through this evaluation, I guess what I would say is seeing the attention to detail that we that I've seen over the last several months is has been excellent. Um, and I know that we have a path forward and, and we have a plan and a very detailed plan at that. So I, I definitely commend you, uh, Dr. Daly, on our, our overall plan and path forward and the attention to detail that you and your team put in. And I would say, you know, having just completed the uh, school committee training and North Reading was referenced at least a half dozen times in that course, um, you know, tells me that not only does it, is the town very lucky, but the state recognizes the level at which this district is performing. Uh, and that was very obvious to me sitting through that training that we were one of two districts that were routinely referenced as best practices on the way to do things. So again, um, coming in late on this, but I, I very much agree with this assessment and um, you know, thank Noel and Jeff for, for putting this together. Yes, and thank you, Noel and Jeff, who's not here. Um, <laughs> Mr. Buckley? Um, yes, just, Dr. Jill. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry go ahead. Did you um, want to add I was something? Just gonna, yeah, I was going to add something. Um, sorry, I keep go ahead, Noel. doing this virtually. Um, um, just, I just wanted to add, just as everyone was talking, I think that there's, there's a lot of areas where I would mark 
and I, I, I think we did mark Dr. Daly as exemplary, but um, I think um, there is an element that, that I've seen with the difficult since I came on to school committee, it's sort of been the same thing. It's been like one one challenge after another. I wonder if there's ever going to be just like a year where <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing really happening. I don't think so. But um, just the communication with the community and the communication um, with compassion with the community um, and listening to everyone's perspectives when um, he truly has like not a lot of time in the day because he's doing running a lot. Um, but taking the time for personal communication, like, you know, even delivering a Chromebook in some cases. But um, I think that is where I, as both the school committee member and a parent, think it's very, we're very lucky to have you. It's very special. So I just wanted to highlight that. All right. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the feedback. Um, I, you know, as Mr. Buckley said, it's the it's the team here. I mean, you read through these things. I, I can't directly take credit for the Maskers program, but I appreciate the, the indirect work that I do, that Mr. Lepret does, that Michael does through the budget. I'm sure that most of what was shouted out at MASC was about what, you know, Michael, Sean, and Cynthia are doing. And, and um, we're really – we are doing some great things, and we're very proud. But as Mr. Buckley said um, – you know, keeping this team together and, and having such an incredible group of principals, leaders, and teachers, and paras, and um, I think it says it says a lot for for what it means to work and in, in, be in North Reading. And I and I appreciate um, you know the buck stops with me, um, and so it, it's I, I do I feel like I can't take credit for these things, but at the same time I I get it because if I was doing everything wrong, some of those things would have a lot more barriers too. So. Um, and, and I just, I want to thank the people that came before me because really the, I, you know, I have not, I will have more of an opportunity soon. Um, but I, I did not hire most of these folks. I did lead the searches for Sean, Cynthia and Michael in, in my past roles and Sean in this current role. And I knew that we got good people. I took three searches for Cynthia and two searches for Michael to find the right people. Um, but my predecessors also really set up a trust. Um, you know, John Bernard, Kathy Willis, David Troden, people that came before us to really establish that uh, baseline with our with our teachers, great hires um, for our leaders and administrators. So I really appreciate the feedback. And um, should I should I go to my new goals, Mr. Buckley? Would that be the best one to go to next? Yeah, so do we need to accept, we don't have to officially accept your evaluation, do we? We're just providing it. I think you're providing it to me, yeah. So. We don't have to accept it, so we're good to go on that. And then yes, and we're not doing the school community evaluation this time, we're doing it next time. So we'll move on to your goals for 20, 25, 26, or 24 yes. through 26. And this, um, you may not have had a chance to review. I, I purposely, we decided with the committee I didn't want to share these out because I didn't want to confuse everyone too much with new goals, old goals. Um, in a lot of ways, they're similar. I carried some things forward. Essentially, my first goal is related to um, student work and data that is really a focus on, um, you know, we talked about our advanced placement courses and advanced coursework, which is Fantastic. That data that was shared tonight is something we should really be proud of. At the same time, um, we want to look at uh, all of our subgroups and all of our students having access to those higher courses. And this is a place where we can do better. When I look at that data, um, I've been working with Mr. LaPrette on this. And really, we've been working at this at every school to lead towards what um, our, our students at the high school are achieving. So rethinking our power block, rethinking our interventions across the district. This is really the focus of this goal is to, is to over the next two years to really think about students that uh, have access to courses, advanced courses. And, um, you know, I think when you look at some of those students who are achieving those threes to fives on those exams, it's a lot of the same students that are taking multiple exams. And then there's certain students that are never partaking. And we want to make sure that everyone has not only the opportunity, but also um, they feel like they belong there. They, they look at that program of studies and say, yes, this is for me. And I think introducing an art course is a great start. 
because I bet you I bet if we looked at it, there might be some students who are participating in that AP that may not have participated in in a different. I I I, I haven't done all that level yet, but that's part of the work we would be doing over the next couple of years. Um, the student the the next goal is really to um, continue the work with the. Uh, the evaluation, I've said before, I think that this process is, if done well, is the most important thing we can all do. If our goals are all aligned and we continue to uh, row the boat in the same direction. And so um, we've adopted the administrator evaluation rubric, the new updated rubric um, for administrators. And the next phase now is really uh, Mr. Clean and I have been looking at this and he, he will take the lead, obviously, rolling it out with the uh, with teachers. So it continues our work with cultural responsive uh, teaching, um, but it extends what we've been doing with the administrators and carries it through the teachers. And this is a multiple year process. When you transition to a new rubric, typically you've got half of our staff ideally finishing a cycle, half finishing it the next year. So it would be sort of a two year transition to the new rubric. Not drastically different. A lot of it's embedded in what we do, but there are some changes that will take some time professional development support, um, and certainly working with uh, Ms. Barrows as well as our DEIB coordinator, because some of what's built right into this new rubric are those culturally responsive policies. Um, the district goal here is really, believe it or not, we're, we're going to start thinking about NRPS 2030. So we are um, coming into the last year of 2025. We do have some um, course corrections to make this year to get where we want to be by 25. We're, we, we've advanced a lot, as you know, and we've, we've moved along. We're not, we haven't done everything. Um, so we're going to be doing a, a, a bigger, you know, this is really the time now to get the community involved, um, staff, everyone involved in what we want our district to look like in 2030. And so that process, it feels like we just did yesterday with Back to the Future and all of that. Um, we would be doing that over the next year or so as we finish out 2025 and begin to look at uh, 2030. And so some of that work actually starts in a couple of weeks at our leadership team retreat. And then my last uh, goal is similar building on the MTSS. Um, but really with that focus, this sort of ties into the first goal, which is sort of the results of the interventions, but this is developing the processes. So working with all of our schools to further develop our intervention blocks at the elementary schools, the middle school, and to really take a close look at how we're using Power Block um, and what we're doing with that data to provide inter interventions for students that are struggling. And so that's the, um, the fourth goal there. So if those look appropriate for the next two-year cycle, um, you could vote to approve those goals. So I'm going to open up for questions and, and, and comments in a minute, but I just want to very quickly, since we do have a lot of newer school committee members here, <clears throat> I do want to just point out, like, I've, you know, when I started on the school committee, the, the goals for the superintendent looked very different. There were many, many, many goals. Um, just like when we do our goals, there, were, there are a lot of goals. But what's happened is a lot of them have been trimmed down. The goal being like there's obviously job responsibilities that the superintendent has no matter what. So like we don't have to put a goal like, you know, to do a budget for this year or something like that. So you can see, you know, in, in these goals, there's, you know, one focus on student learning, one focus on professional practice, and then a couple of district goals. And then each of them are supposed to have one or maybe two indicators or elements under there. And so... Just, just for the newer people, just understanding that this is not all the job that Dr. Daly is doing, but this is just sort of the focus over the next, you know, next couple of years. <clears throat> the only two questions that I had for you, Dr. Daly, number one is, is if, if there is any role of yours in the accreditation process that, you know, Mr. LaPrat talked about, and if that should maybe be part of this at all. And then the second is on the NRPS 2030, I just... <clears throat> I just, I know we've done five year, you know, plans in the past, but just with some of the budgetary challenges we're having in these particular years, I just wonder if, is, is it even fair to do like a five year goal where we're going to be in 2030? Um, and, and again, I know we want to be thinking ahead and I'm sure that, you know, within that there's, there's shorter periods of time in there, but 
I just wonder how achievable it is to have a goal, you know, in the next year or so that's going to be, you know, really looking at what we're going to be looking at in 2030. So those are my, my only two questions, the accreditation and the five-year goal. And, and just those, those five-year goals are broken down by year. So it's sort of a, gives us a little bit of a longer runway to get to. Um, and it's, a, it's aligned with our, basically the strategy and action plan that we've used since 2011 to sort of outline our process. Um, with the NEASC part, I would say I, I don't directly have a role Okay. Um, certainly, we all play a role in organizing and supporting the high school, but I would say the goals around using PowerBlock is absolutely going to be a huge part of what they're able to share with me. Ask as far as uh, opportunity gaps and and student access, and those those are real areas of focus for the high school that I think will go a long way to. Um, I, I don't want to say impress, but to impress upon the NEASC uh, visiting team and evaluation team. So I'm really, I am really, if you notice, I have sort of a, a high school focus here. Also thinking about the transition of leadership there and, and how I want to support the new principal with, th with these major initiatives here as well. Any questions, comments from the committee? I guess I'll just go around Noel, anything? I'm muted. I know. Sorry. It's just that button. <laughs> um, no questions. Um, but this is sort of just like a left field question, which I'm really good at, which is um, with the um, change in leadership at the high school, um, when do, does the school committee have any um, role in that? Yeah, so we will be forming a uh, search committee, and there would be a school committee member on that committee. There'd be teachers, parents, um, students, um, and uh, you know, paraprofessionals, and possibly some other representatives. Usually, um, you know, like an administrative assistant from the high school. So I, I will open it up to some volunteer. I'll have a few alternate spots too. Um, there'd be a screening committee, an interview committee. And then ultimately, the decision is a is a superintendent's hire, but it's a it's a very very important position as a, all our principals. But obviously, high school principal has certain uh, weight in the community. So I want to make sure there's a lot of uh, voices in that group, both of right. and, I, I, and interviewing. Sorry. Yeah, yeah I, do, I was just because I do agree. It really that will really set the tone for the next the next five years. For yeah, sure. and and also you know I do plan on doing a full process with that. So similar to what I did, I led the, the search for Dr. O'Connell as well in the middle school. That was the last uh, major principal search that we did. And it was the first one that I did, not as a super, but as an assistant super. Um, similar process. I sort of am going back to that template, though, where it's full, you know, I will do full focus groups with staff, with parents, with students um, to hear what what they're looking for in their next leader. So we're going to do the full process. Great. Thank you, Noel. Jen, comments, thoughts? No, no. we're good. I think it's great. Tim? Uh, no, I think it's good and it's kind of consistent with what I was expecting. And, and I, I'd like to see the, the forward look of the goals and not seeing a job description in the set of goals. So I'm glad that we've moved to this format uh, moving forward. Okay. And if there's nothing else, I guess we're looking at you, Mr. Sutherland, for a motion to accept um, Dr. Daly's goals for 2024 through 2026. Uh, I move to accept to the superintendent goals for the 2024 20 through 2026 uh, evaluation period. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? Okay. We'll vote. Tim? Aye. Noel? Aye. Jen? Aye. I'm an aye as well. Passes four to zero. And just for the record, we are officially passing over the North Reading School Committee evaluation um, for the next meeting. Right. I, I believe we wanted to just review the goals. Is that right? Yeah, that's fine. I, I could just um, add 
uh, something quickly. Mr. Colleen uh, shared with me, it's about 12 to 16 students from each school who would be participating in the uh, math interventions. Math intervention. So it's a, it's a small subset of students. Okay. So I, I can share the uh, this document now. <laughs> um, but we're gonna we're gonna input our comments before the next meeting for uh, correct. Yeah, and and also get your juices flowing on what the goals are moving forward. Um, because our our but our not our budget our goals workshop is coming up um, next month. Yeah, and and understand that that meeting is going to be in person to serve his calendar so we will be in person and the workshop will be in dr dilly's office and then the meeting afterwards will be a hybrid as usual and that's august 26 i believe right yeah I yes. okay that Monday. it happens to be the day before my birthday so i will be accepting gifts i will bring in <laughs> cupcakes noel <laughs> just to review there, I'm just going to scroll through this, but this is the, what's in here is the former, uh, these are the scores from last time, just so people can see where the group rated. This is really the, um, the piece that is, you know, this is the evaluation of the committee and the work that the committee does. Mm -hmm. And then underneath that, we've combined into one document now. So this is that part is 45 elements there. Um, that you do collectively and, and come to consensus on. And then this is the update on your own goals. Similar to our process, we used the did not, some progress, significant progress met or exceeded. And so I don't know if we want to just, just get updates here at this point on professional development sessions related to the committee. I don't know if you want to walk through them, Noel, or yeah, and I think um, what the takeaway from this is that the school committee needs to catch up to Dr. Daly um, <laughs> in his in, in our in our in our goals and our goal achievement. Um, <laughs> so um, I'm just yeah, Jen and Tim really have to hold their weight this year. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's just I'm going to open this up on my own screen because it's blind. Um, hold on. Okay, so. Um, here we have um, the uh, leadership and governance goal. The school committee will engage in one professional development um, presentation session. Um, Tim Noel, I can speak for us by saying it, that has not been met yet. So I think we um, having, I'm not going to blame the uh, the uh, madness of the of uh, the override and the election on this, but I think this is something that you know, Tim, if we if we stick with this goal, which we sh we, we really need to we can make this a focus like right out of the gates um, going into the fall because that that needs to be done. Um, and I, if I, I still do appreciate getting thrown this one, you know, right right after getting elected. So do, thank, thank you for that one, Scott. I, I can share, well. just share as well that we, you know, we are presenting at the MASS, MASC joint conference in November. And I believe Mr. Buckley might be participating, but he may be willing to let somebody else participate as well. We're presenting on the shared, the shared model with, um, with SEAM, with our DIB multi-district coordinator. So that's another opportunity to come down and get some professional development at the conference. So just throw that out there too. Tim, if you want to take a road trip with Scott, that would be wonderful. That's a difficult time of year for me. That, so. That's the one down on the Cape, right? In November? Correct. On it is. Yeah, yeah. So just yeah, want to share that. Keep that in mind, Tim, in case. Um, okay, we have. Uh, Dr. The, Dr. Daly, I might reach out to you because I think I have to still register for that if I'm going. I guess <laughs> I got to okay. do that. Yep. Um, the other part there is review the school committee policies and structures in place related to school safety. Um, now, a lot had been done in the past year uh, over this, so Jeff is not here to give an update on that. I don't know if Dr. Daly, you can speak to any more pro progress here, but. Um, I know a lot of progress was made last year and into the beginning of this year. Yeah, I think I think the biggest piece here we've done, we've introduced the the safety checks with the with the police officers at the buildings. That's been very successful in my opinion and in the opinions of all the principals as well as the NRPD. Um, we we have updated our MOU and we have 
um, you know, made that consistent with the guidance that came out at the state level. I know that Ms. Boutwell was a member of that committee at the state level. Um, financially, there were discussions around adding additional SROs or adding, um, you know, additional supports for our SRO. And I think those things, as we talk about budget, not only here, but at the police department, those are things to continue to advocate for. Um, mm -hmm. We can always use more support, but we are getting, um, you know, I, I think we are getting a great uh, support from our SRO. Officer Lucci does a fantastic job. Um, he will be doing some other work this year as well that I think will be a benefit to the district, but um, this is a goal where I think we've really done well um, through, through your advocacy and, and hard work to get that new plan in place. Um, okay, moving on to financial asset management. Um, this will be, this is an interesting goal here based upon what, um, you know, with the override and things changing, um, but the school committee will support the development of a plan to reduce the kindergarten fees, um, leading towards the eventual goal of providing free full day. Um, I mean, we are sort of slowly chipping away at that. Scott, do you want to comment? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say we did it. I mean, we. Yeah, I mean, we not not to the degree that you that you hoped, but. <laughs> well, we again, we we presented the plan. We presented the plan and and how we would fund it if if it was passed and it you know wasn't passed, but we incorporated in the budget at least not increasing the fee. As you saw last meeting, we increased some of the other fees um, this year um, as we needed to, but. We, you know, we, we kind of spoke as a group about what we were going to do on kindergarten fees with an override and without an override. And so I think we did that one. And, and on the one before, Diana was on the school research office. The one and I was involved a little bit early on. I think everything that we wanted to do, we did. The only thing that didn't happen was we had talked about having a joint um, executive session with the select board one day about, you know, safety issues. And that never really came to fruition. I don't know that there was necessarily a need from some other discussions outside of that, but yeah, but I think I think that that was done. Um, and I'll just comment quickly on the solar power as well. Um, I know that I had done it the year before. I don't think there was any updates this year. We wanted to keep it on just to see if there was any new, you know, new initiatives out there for schools to, you know, be able to participate. And I don't think anything new came up this year, but we're hearing there might be things in the future, so we've sort of kept it on just just to take a look every year and make sure that the financial arrangements haven't changed at all. Okay, um, moving on to the um, next here. Um, okay, this is, oh, you know, it's funny, I don't see a person assigned to this goal. Um, the school committee will develop strategies to preserve positions and supports that were implemented in part with ESSER funding while continuing to move the district forward. Um, we apparently have no one assigned to this goal. <laughs> it's probably just my fault. I will, I will tell you in a second. <laughs> okay. Um, again, we, same, same thing. We did, we did it as part of the overall. I mean, we, we called out what the extra positions were and, you know, yeah, as part of the budget, I thought that was all pretty clear what we had out there. So, okay. Um, let's see again, the, um, review the impact of current fee structure. Um, and I think again, we've done what we can do, um, in terms of family caps and just sensitivity for that. But again, the override did impact this. I don't know if, um, Scott, you have any other comments there? No, I mean, you saw that we raised the athletic fee last meeting because yeah, it's been but I balance. believe we kept we kept the family cap the same. Am I correct? Correct. Yeah. Correct. The only thing that we haven't really looked at was the other extracurriculars, and you know we should eventually do that. Um, and I have a feeling that that'll be a big part of discussions for next year because if we're making cuts, you know, because the budget's going to be tight. Um, if we're going to be cuts, I think a big discussion point will be on what part of uh, extracurriculars are funded by uh, by by these fees and what can be done to keep programs the best we can <clears throat> but yeah i mean i think again i think we did that as well as we could and the bus fee the one below also we looked at the we i think that was diana and i in the bus and we you know we had a meeting we decided to extend the do the option for the bus for this year and you saw last time that we increased the bus fee because of the 
um, because of the increased fees that we're seeing for next year for the busing. Yeah. All right. So we're kind of commented on everything here. Um, moving on to education. Um, we will participate in a working group to implement the steps of the NRPS 2025 goals related to equity, diversity, inclusion. Um, Jeff is not here. Dr. Daly, do you want to speak to that at all? So, yeah, and I think I, some of this needs to be updated, obviously, to reflect the new committee members who are there. Um, we did have some participation. I think Rich was a part of that, too. Um, but we would love to have uh, more you know, school committee represented like at our K-12 action team meetings would be a great place to get involved. And I know some of you have been involved in the outdoor time recess, which will probably be part of that too. So it would be great um, to have a, a member or two to, to check in at those. I think that's a great way to, to check in. So I'll really try to push that out to you every time we're doing, we only do those four times a year. So. And then we, you know, we had our community training this year, I don't think we had a school committee member there. I think we had some that were interested, but then couldn't attend it. But um, those are other great opportunities. Should, Dr. Daly, we can talk about this next meeting, but should we appoint somebody to just go to the K through 12 meetings? I mean, like we have for the parent groups, uh, I when, when uh, Janine left the committee, I took over that, that meeting. I wonder if we should talk about some of these meetings where we want a school committee member to be there. That we all just kind of sort of say like, oh, I'll I'll go to this meeting, I'll go to that meeting, just to kind of have. Sure, sure, that's not a bad idea if you'd like to do it that way. <laughs> rather, rather than just saying, if anybody wants to go, here's it is. Maybe we say, okay, I'm going to go to this one. Tim's going to go to this one. Jeff's going to go to that one. Do you want to do that now, Scott? <laughs> or should we no, talk I, about this maybe at our, no, I, our goals? I think, I think it's part of the, the goals for next next okay. year. I think we'll talk about like, yeah. we can say we can participate in some of these other things that they want school committee members in, and we can just sort of divide up through this. I mean, Tim saying he didn't have enough time to do his job, but we can see Noelle's done her job. I'm just pointing out mm -hmm. the record. <laughs> Um, yeah, and also, again, I think going through these tonight, I would, you know, I would hope that this will get people thinking about where their interests and um, opportunities lay for, you know, for the next year. Um, let's see, we, um, we have, you know, on this next goal in terms of um, the uh, UDL and the MTSS, I feel like that's been um, really incorporated into all of our meetings. Um, you know, the presentations that have been done by the schools um, in specific have always brought up specific elements of this. So this is a goal that I think we've really done well at. And I would like to continue to, you know, keep as a goal in one way, shape or form. Um, and of course, the outdoor time that has definitely um, been um, at the forefront, especially this spring, and will continue to be a goal for us moving forward. Um, I think a lot of progress has been done there. Um, and I missed the last meeting where you spoke about the social media device um, device usage. So that is something that I could re remain interested in as well, but I don't know if Dr. Daly or uh, Scott, you have an, an update on that. I can share. We we made a presentation last meeting. Um, I can I can definitely need to review any of that with you as well. Um, but we had a group that looked at cell phone usage. We talked about actually, Amy Luckwitz also stole my thunder because through the CIT she also talked about that day. I think the Surgeon General came out and said there should be a warning label on social media sites for kids. Um, so we talked about cell phone usage, social media. And we definitely see that as, as being another K-12 action group for next year. There's a lot of interest from students and uh, the community to discuss this further. So we'll continue that discussion. I would agree it's a good goal to, uh, to continue with. Right. And it will continue to be extremely relevant um, and moving forward. As a quick update, we applied for a grant, haven't received it, but um, that really looks at this in depth and also it's a student uh, behavior framework for mental health, but there's certainly an element of this as well. So hopefully we get that, fingers crossed. Okay, great. Um, 
All right, let's see. Um, we have a CPAC goal here. Um, let's see, Scott, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I didn't do a whole lot this year. Um, I think CPAC has gone through a couple changes in the last couple of years. There was a person that was in charge for a very long time. A new person got involved. A bunch of people joined, and then I think it looks like all of them have left. And so it's just sort of, you know, Kathy on her own right now. So I think next year is going to be a, a a busy time. I think she presented at our last one, two meetings ago. Um, you know, she talked about some of the challenges and one of her big goals for next year is recruiting people. And so I'll make sure that I try to be a support um, or one of us can, you know, I think it's a goal that we have to continue just because there's a lot of, um, a lot of change happening in that group. And so I think it's good for us to support, um, support the people that are volunteering their time there. But I, I, this, this year there was just a lot of, there were some webinars and I made a couple of them, but not all of them. Okay. So finally, um, the um, school committee will support the district's efforts to offer family university. Um, I think that's been a continued success um, and, you know, trying to vary up the offerings as well, where it's, you know, maybe not one day, but over a series of days and things like that. And I think it would be definitely great to continue to explore um, the different ways of, um, of having um, community members that attend the family university, whether it's a combination of, of things. Um, but Dr. Daly, I don't know if you have any comments on that as well. Yeah, certainly feel supported. Our first event of this year will be uh, a parent welcome. Um, so we'd love to have committee members there. I don't know if anyone was able to attend any of Dr. Englander's presentations or to watch them virtually. Um, you know, we've had some other um, community events as well. I know some of you wanted to attend and couldn't make it. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely feel supported that you've encouraged us. And when we've shared, you know, updates on Family University, there's certainly a lot of support from the committee. Um, and then we'd love to see you uh, be a part of any, anything that we offer as well. So thank you for all of that. When is that welcome, um, Dr. Daly? We haven't established the date yet, but we will put that out. It'll be in late August as school approaches, but it would be a welcome for new families. Um, and we're going to connect with the community. Um, I know that uh, several members of our community impact team also want to be involved. Youth services, um, library, you know, Amy Luckwitz with the substance abuse program. So um, I Many of them do other things as well, but this is sort of a welcome of new school families, but then connect them to services in town. So um, more to come on that very soon. Mr. Clean's working closely. With me on as well. we're, we're, we're seeing some new families move to town as well that, um, you know, there, there might be some new language barriers or things that, so I think um, it would be really helpful to help connect people to put names with faces and, and see some of the great services we have to support everyone. So. Okay. Great. Looking forward to hearing those dates. Um, I would like to attend if I'm able. Um, okay. okay. So I think that's it. And looking forward to our goals workshop. That's always a nice optimistic way to start the year. <laughs> Very good. Okay. We're on the routine matters. Mr. Massey's not used to an hour and a half meeting, but he's uh, seeing what one looks like. Um, we have minutes. Who's uh, Noel? I think you lead us for the minutes, right? You're muted if you're leading us. Yeah, sorry. I'm so used to being in person with you, beautiful people. I, I hate having all these windows. I'd rather just be like looking at you. But hold on, let me just open this up. Um, and I'll get to that. Sorry. Minutes. We just need a motion to accept the June 27th regular session. Meeting. And where's minutes? I'm just scrolling down. Um, approve the minutes from the June 27th um, open session meeting as written. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. And Jen, just so, again, you don't have to do with this, but 
generally, if people aren't at meetings, they usually abstain from the minutes um, vote, but you can do whatever you'd like to do. Um, so we have a motion, we have a second. Um, we'll do Noel. Um, I wasn't there, so abstain. You, you were there. I was in, were you, I was oh, at the were, you, were you not there? No, I, I was in Austria. <laughs> So, wait, so, hallucinating. so, that, so then we need to revise it to say that you weren't there. We, we only have three people at this meeting. Jen was there, wasn't she? No, you're, I think it, you're talking about there was like the regular one and yeah, then there was the one on that Thursday. Well. You, I think you were there. This was the virtual meeting. This was the virtual one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this was okay. in the morning. Right. You were there. Okay, yeah. yep. Sorry, sorry. My bad. Okay. So the motion um, for a second. Noel. Aye. Jen. Aye. Noel. Aye. Okay. Jen. Jen. <laughs> Abstain. Uh, and I'm I'm an I, so passes three zero one abstention. Okay. Um, okay, sorry. Okay, there's the there's the minutes. Um, who does the gifts usually? That uh, Jeff. Jeff. Oh, Jen, you're up. <laughs> oh, now I gotta do Windows. Hang on. And just just one point of clarification from Mr. Connolly, because I know there was a gift mem there was a memos with a bunch of them in there. And then I saw a bunch of single ones as well. Are we doing just the memo with the few in there, or, or are there other ones that we are doing this time as well? It's all it's all the combined you know, one. Yeah. Yeah. We actually just one point. I think we do. We miss the budget update. Do we? That's coming up. Oh wait. Oh, you're right. I, I was skipping over that. Sorry. You want to just do okay. the memos and then go yeah, back to the budget? Let's just do the let's accept the business donations now, and then we'll do the uh, budget update. Okay. All right. All right. Are we ready? Yes. Go ahead. All right. Uh, I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation in the amount of three hundred forty-three dollars and fifty-six cents from the Batchelder's parent organization to help purchase Italian ice for Batchelder's Field Day. Second. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. Um, Tim. Aye. Noel. Aye. Jen. Aye. I'm an aye as well. Passes four zero. Okay, uh, I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $1,000 from the Batchelder School PTO towards the grade four trip to Lowell Mills. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Uh, Tim? Aye. Noel? Aye. Jen? Aye. I'm an aye as well, passes 4-0. I move to the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $360 from the little school PTO for the bus to the kindergarten field trip to Smolak Farms. Uh, second. Motion a second. Any discussion? Tim? Aye. Noel? Aye. Jen? Aye. I'm an aye as well. Passes 4-0. I move, the school, I move the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $3,000 from Joshua and Jamie Hewlett to help fund the North Reading High School's baseball field bleacher project. Second. We have a motion to a second. Any discussion? Um, Tim? Aye. Noel? Aye. Jen? Aye. I'm an aye as well. Passes 4-0. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a bid of $3,000 from Nick's Place for the sponsorship and sign space in support of North Reading High School's baseball field bleacher project. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Uh, any discussion? Kim. Aye. Noel. Aye. Jen. Aye. I'm an aye as well. Passes 4 0. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $4,000 from the class of 2023 with 500 each to the Batchelder, Hood, Little, and Middle Schools and 2000 to the high school. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? Uh, my only question on the discussion, Mr. Connolly, is, uh, is does that close out their account in full or is there still money in their account? They, they would still be some money in their account and what they would do is we would return that once they've established a reunion account okay um so they've left a, they've left a few thousand dollars in there for their for, to start up their reunion account okay we have a motion we have a second um tim aye noel aye jen aye i'm an aye as well passes four zero 
I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a bid of $10,000 from North Reading Little League for sponsorship and sign space in support of North Reading High School's baseball field bleacher project. Second. Motion to move a second. Any discussion? Kim. Aye. Noel. Aye. Jen. Aye. I'm an aye as well. Passes 4 0. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $400 from Anderson Ferreira to the high school band. Second. We have a motion and a discussion. Uh, a motion and a second. Any discussion? Kim? Aye. Noel? Aye. Jen? Aye. I'm an I as well. Pass the four zero. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $150 from Philip and Kathleen Buston as a donation towards the RISE program. Second. Any discussion? Um, now, Kim? Aye. Noel? Aye. Jen? Aye. I'm an aye as well. Passes 4 0. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a bid of $3,000 from Torah Law for sponsorship and sign space in support of North Reading High School's baseball field bleacher project. Second. Any discussion? Kim? Aye. Noel? Aye. Jen? Aye. I'm an aye as well. Pass it 4 0. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $250 from the North Reading Gas and Services in support of Kids at Transitional Academy. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Kim? Aye. Noel? Aye. Jen? Aye. I'm an aye as well. Passes 4 0. I think I got them all, but Google kept reordering them every time I opened one. <laughs> I, have t I have 12. Yeah, that, I, I lost track. Did we get all the ones that are in the gift memos? No, we did not. We, we had those other 12, and then we have the four in the gift memo, too. Yeah, I, I didn't see 12. I only saw five. There was a bunch of them in there that weren't in the one memo together. Yeah, and so. I think we might have just approved some that we've already approved. I'm not exactly sure. Michael, you might know more. But... Let's do the ones that is shared. That's, um, I'll put them on the screen right now. Okay. Yeah. This was, it was just done by a couple of different people. So I think there are some different ways it was shared. Um, so the, there's four here if you want to just read these. Yeah, I think that's going to be it. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $150 from Kathleen Kloop for the Batchelder Scholarship. Oh, now you're you're uh, hiding it there, Larry. Sorry. It's obviously scholarship fund. Yeah, fund for two high school second. seniors. Sorry. Sorry. Second. Okay. Motion second. Any discussion? Um, Tim? Aye. Noel? Aye. Jen? Aye. I'm an aye as well. Passes 4 0. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $40 from Louise and Bruce Curtis for the Batchelder Scholarship Fund for two high school seniors. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Tim? Aye. Noel? Aye. Jen? Aye. I'm an aye as well. Pass this 4 0. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $200 from David and Angela Matthews for the Batch Elder Scholarship Fund for two high school seniors. <laughs> second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? Tim? Aye. Noel? Aye. Jen? Aye. I'm an aye as well. Passes 4 0. <laughs> I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $25 from Mark and Constant Signore for the Batchelder Scholarship Fund for two high school seniors. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? Kim? Aye. Noel? Aye. Jen? Aye. I'm an aye as well. Passes 4 0. Thank you very much. We have no grants. And now we'll go to the budget update, Mr. Connolly. Great, thank you. So, um, so in your packet was the final budget report for fiscal year 2024. Um, so you can review it and reflect in the report is the where we ended with our expenses and our 
uh, payroll salary information. Um, so I'm happy to report that we had sort of a another kind of successful closeout of fiscal year 2024. Um, you know, despite some of the you know the challenges that obviously arise throughout the fiscal year and some unanticipated costs in certain areas. Um, we were able to stay uh, within budget. All of the personnel personnel costs remain within budget. Uh, we did identify some savings in some areas with supplies supplies and materials um, due to just conservative spending. Um, utility costs uh, in some areas um, we identified some 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 surplus uh, line items. Um, we, we were really. Um, I think frugal in our spending and our maintenance costs and worked hard to to save wherever possible. So we were we had some balances in our maintenance line line items. We had some balances in our salary accounts for just teachers, paraprofessionals, and custodians. I think that was partly due to some attrition that occurred, as well as just there was some extended leave of absences that resulted in some some unpaid time during the course of the, the fiscal year. So I think it's fair to say that all these savings um, assisted with enabling the district to take the necessary steps to try to do what we can um, to give us some a bit, some flexibility as we enter fiscal year 2025 as we normally do. So we were able to prepay special education tuitions, in some cases purchase materials and educational software to help us be ready and prepared for next school year. Um, in addition, we were able to use available funds to help pay some regular transportation and athletic invoices from the general fund as opposed to some revolving accounts. And this will help ensure revolving account balances are in good, in, in good standing as we head into this new fiscal year 2025, where we know there's going to be some funding, funding challenges. Um, on the expense side, all costs remain within budget ranges. The district special education transportation costs were a little higher than anticipated due to an increase in the number of students. Um, our district tuition line exceeded the budget in some amounts, but we did we did exceed our our budgeted amount of prepayments for fiscal year 2025, and that will all help us as we enter um, this next fiscal year. So despite some another kind of unique year that presented many challenges and circumstances, we were able to leverage areas of savings and, and spend conservatively in many areas and to address unanticipated costs. And overall, I was very pleased with how we closed out fiscal year 2024. As you can see by the, re by the report, um, we are closing out the fiscal year with a, a very small balance of just over $100. And we are only carrying forward a little more than $2,500 of unpaid bills um, into this fiscal year, which will all be closed out and paid by the end of this month. So with that, I open it up to any questions. Thank you, Mr. Connolly. Um, I just want to comment very quick and just say thank you to you for all your work this year. Um, I know you were, you know, the main one involved in all the budget stuff and a very smooth closeout. I know some neighboring towns had a lot of challenges this year with, you know, inflation and costs going up and you did an excellent job of managing it throughout. So we very much appreciate your efforts in that. Um, only two questions I have. Number one, with the level of special education, um, would we reach the extra extraordinary for this year for a reimbursement or not? This past uh, we did. We were just under that. We did not reach the extraordinary circuit breaker so we had to be at 25 percent and we were just under 20 percent and just for the people for the newer members if if we spend with a 20 so if we spend 25 percent more than we were anticipating on special education there is some additional funding that we can access um, Correct. as mr Colley just said even though we set budgets as best we can it was still almost 20 percent higher for special education last year than we had anticipated because of movements and other placements which obviously destroys the budget so um excellent job mr Connolly, managing those situations and then food service was obviously a huge um advantage for you know our, our district i'm just curious where did where where did the final number end up closing out for um the food service program food service so we have a pretty we have a healthy balance in the food service account um so we ended up over $750,000 balance at the end of this fiscal year. Right. 
So um, we certainly have put measures into place as part of our balancing of the budget that is going to spend down um, throughout this current fiscal year, beginning of the school year, that balance as we now are going to be looking to charge some indirect costs um, in um, in that account, in that FSA revolving account, in terms of utilities and some potentially some custodial costs. So um, I think that will be necessary. And then we did invest back this month and we are we are investing in some some equipment upgrades and um, we're needed at the elementary school. So we are we are spending some of that balance. Uh, but there is there is a healthy balance in, in large part because of the large participation that's has existed in that account over the last several years. Um, and I think, you know, I, I think this the conference the conference budget that was recently approved, it, it brought into question the ability for the universal free lunch program to be funded for the full year. So I'm trying to get as many updates on that as I can, but I think we have to kind of monitor and watch watch that. Um, I don't think the conference committee, I think they cut a little bit into the the universal free lunch that was proposed by the Senate Ways and Means. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's something definitely to watch then. Um, the only other quick question, Mr. Connolly. Do we, did we do we have to vote? Do we have to put on the next agenda <coughs> a vote to increase the cost of a lunch? Did we? I don't think we did that. Yeah. So um, I did. I was in planning on bringing that today, to, uh, but I think in speaking with the the food service director, uh, Ms. Folto, she there's sort of a it's sort of a for, formula. It's like a formulaic. It's a formula that goes into it and a methodology in terms of making sure you're meeting the paid equity lunch program for a paid lunch as well. And so what is helpful is if we we get the reimbursement rates for next year first. Okay. Um, and those have not been officially set yet, but okay. we do need to increase the lunch <laughs> prices for next year to stay, to really to, to, to meet the uh, requirements of that program. Yep. So we've kind of fallen under that threshold of a paid lunch that exists. So once those rates are set, which should be in the in early to the mid-August, we would bring that forward. And again, that that would just be for a second entree or a second lunch that a student that already received a free lunch may go up, may go up to the line and look to purchase. Okay. I thought I screwed up and forgot that. So Mr. Bruno, I, I wanted to bring it previously, but I've been waiting for some data and I think I know what it needs to be, but I think we we're just waiting for that information. Okay, Dr. Daly, just wanted to add that, as Michael said, that the what's going to the governor right now is at one seventy. I guess it needs to be at one ninety to be fully funded. So it was there; it got reduced um, coming out of the conference committee. the uh, The other piece that got reduced was the per pupil. It's still significantly higher than where it was, but it's it's now to the governor's desk at one hundred four per student. It was at 110, but that's greatly above the, the 30 where we were before. So um, some, some good news and bad news coming out of there. Um, and I just want to echo what you said, thanking you know, Michael for the transparency of these reports throughout the year that keep us um, well informed of any surprises. You know, there's still, there's still room for surprises, but um, we're getting these updates, you know, at, at least – once a month um, is, is usually the norm with these budget updates. So we really appreciate the hard work that goes into that. So thank you. Okay. Um, no staffing update, Dr. Daly? Uh, not at this time. I will share that, um, as you mentioned, we did have to make some reductions and cuts. Um, you know, I, I it was some difficult decisions. I know that some people have taken jobs in other communities. So that's, you know, a sort of a silver lining, but we would much rather have those excellent uh, educators with us. Um, and no overnight trip requests? None at this time. <clears throat> we do subcommittee updates. Um, finance planning team met on July 19th. Uh, Mr. Friedman was not there. I was. It was our first meeting since the override vote. And we just sort of did a recap of, you know, what that you know what happened there we were talking about the cuts that are being made on the school side um we were talking a little bit about october town meeting already and um, how to fund 
the capital projects that are that that are not funded right now, particularly the, the two bridges and the uh, fire truck. And then the other thing that I brought up for a capital a capital request could be the um, new vocational school because um, that funding really starts this year. And so the select board is going to have to have some discussions about how they want to fund that, whether uh, looking for debt exclusion, using pull team, you know, the pull team money, um, or, or not doing some of the projects. So that's discussions that are to come. But I think that was the bulk of what we talked about at the finance planning team. Did I miss anything, Mr. Connolly or Dr. Daly? No, I don't think so. Um, evaluation subcommittee met right before this, it looks like. Um, any updates? I don't know, well, just what we saw. <laughs> yes, Noel. Yep. No, sorry. I'm just, I had to hold up my finger while I unmuted. I've got fat, slow fingers, but no, you got all the updates. Okay. okay. Um, my, that's, that's my typo. That's not evaluate. It was a policy subcommittee that met. Oh, uh, policy subcommittee. Okay. Uh, so is there a pol any updates on policy subcommittee or not? There are some. Yeah. Yes. Do we want to start with the, uh, in our packet, we have the letter from the sure. Yep. sure, you can start if you like. That's what we talked about. Yeah, we don't have to discuss the details of it, but we can just discuss um, what we talked about in general terms, yeah, about field naming. So I think that in terms of the Hood School, we were thinking that we could we could vote on that per the school committee. For the, it's just for the turf. So my only question would be, so well, two things. Number one, can we vote on that? I don't know that being posted in correspondence is enough to be an agenda item. Oh, okay. I would think that probably needs to be a separate agenda item if we're going to vote on it. Dr. Daly, do you think? Yeah. I I don't know that we're going to vote on it tonight, but I think the point was we would discuss tonight whether that's something we could vote on here as opposed to going through the full uh, policy committee that eventually needs to go to town meeting. We felt like it was, and I heard the discussion was that that being just a subsection of a facility um, would be akin to uh, we named a section of the high school and we put a plaque up when there was a donor. And so we felt like that could probably not meet the full criteria of full field naming as outlined in the policy. So if we agree to that, then we could put it on a, an agenda for next meeting. So do we, do we think that, because over the last two meetings, we've had two different letters about trying to name different things after different people for different reasons. And so I think um, we should have some consistency there. And if the consistency is, if it's a, because one of them is a, is it a field or a field comp? Because one of them was a field they want. The last correspondence was one of them was a field being named after somebody. There's two there. fields. Two fields that we believe would follow the process. We we were hopeful that we would be able to um, combine that into one search committee um, to kind of evaluate. And then this third one that just came in this time about uh, it, it's technically a it's a turf field, but it's, it's a small area at the front of the playground um, that we felt wasn't the same as a, as a town field, you know, and I, I can get further clarification from the town of that, but I think that it is, um, it is distinct was the feeling of the policy subcommittee. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and I guess the, while they're both fields, like one is a field that sports teams, you know, they, they rent out, to sports teams, they do other things versus this is, you know, an area in front of a playground at, at a school. Um, I, I don't know. I don't really have a, an opinion on it. I, Noel, what are your thoughts? So, well, I guess first, Tim and Jen, you guys are in the policy subcommittee. Did you think that under the policies as written, that is different and wouldn't need to go to a sub, would not need to go to a 
um, a committee for the naming? Yeah, I mean, I think two things, Scott. I think one, I, to me, the distinction of, you know, the, the example I use is everyone knows what Rita Mullen Field is. Everybody knows what Kenny Field is. And I believe rightfully so that should go through an evaluation and go through to all the way to town meeting for naming a field that's widely used across town. I don't think we should be discouraging our schools or anywhere else around town from creating new spaces, which is really what this turf field is. And then offering to the school committee naming based on philanthropic efforts from people within town. Um, and to me, that's where I draw the, the line of distinction per the current policy. Jen, do you agree? Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's it's different than the, the other two requests. Okay. But there, was, there was consensus, though, that it still needs to at least go to school committee for approval. Yeah. Correct. Um, so, so, and this will be a good, you know, reminder to the, you know, schools and to the principals as well that, you know, even, even naming, uh, putting a plaque on the wall, naming your gym, naming your library, anything like that really needs to go in front of the school committee. Um, and, and I think there's another level of just sort of, you know, naming the gym for the day that the PTO does, or those are sort of unofficial naming, but anything that's going to have a permanent plaque placed there, um, that's sort of the official name that goes beyond a, a, a short period of time um, due to a, an auction or something is is a process that needs to go by the school. Committee. So if everyone's in agreement with that, we can put on the agenda for the next meeting the hood letter. And then I would I would also start maybe what I would suggest if there's if there's a person who wants to work with me, because I, I do think for the other fields, we should get something out soon, solicit the members of this nine member committee to review and to, and to put out uh, to the community um, suggestions for names, because if we are trying to get something on the October town meeting, we need to really move kind of quickly with that. So I don't know if, if it's the chair or if someone else wants to just be my person, mm -hmm. we could do everything virtually, but what we had discussed and then again, this is sort of beyond the policy subcommittee, but we just discussed how the policy would play out. Um, we would likely have, since it's involving a field, we would open it up to, you know, someone from the athletics department here from the schools, but also the town recreation department um, and then some community members, maybe some youth sports folks, right, just to have some good representation from the town. So... <clears throat> There's two different things there. So first, Noel, are you in agreement on the on the field, the the, the, the subsection, the turf field area? Yep, I uh, I agree with everything that's been said so far. So go ahead, go on ahead. Okay, I'm again, I I'm I'm a little not hundred percent in agreement, but I, I don't strongly oppose it either. I just think it's I think it's a hard distinction to make, but I think it's fine in the situation, and so. I will follow everybody else's lead, so I agree. And so I think we can put that on the next meeting for a vote um, at the Batchelder School. And then for the other piece of this, I don't know if somebody really wants to organize the, you know, the subcommittee and that part of it for the for the naming. I'm happy to do it if other people don't really want to do it, um, but I'm also happy to let others if they prefer it. So does anybody strongly want to? guide that process or do you want me to guide the process <laughs> strongly no but if you want to get something off your plate i don't mind doing it either scott so <laughs> i can i can do it i mean i i know both the people that are being recommended and i work with dr daly and enough things already that i think we could probably just handle that pretty quickly so i mean i i think it's important that we you know per so per policy we should really we we'll probably want to use the town email distribution system or whatever to uh, you know allow people to apply to be on this committee and then and then down select from there assuming we even get nine which may be a struggle yeah I, and, and the policy doesn't say we have to have nine by the way it's up to nine okay so it's not like if we get five if only five people volunteer we don't need to <laughs> hold off until june town meeting okay um <clears throat> I'm happy. I'm happy to do it, Dr. Daly. We can connect at some point and just talk about what we should do as the next steps. And mm -hmm. I think the next step is just kind of first, first figuring out the committee or the the group or whatever. And so maybe get some names and we can post it somewhere. We can we can reach out. I don't know if Neil's on here still or not, but we can reach out to Neil and see if he can post something for us in the transcript as well. If we're looking for volunteers. 
and we can ask some people that might be interested in forming being on the committee. <clears throat> okay. Thank you guys. If nothing else there, um, no administrative report. No, no, there is an upcoming finance planning team meeting that I forget when we schedule it for. It's in August at some point. I can tell you right, August, it's August 16th. We have a finance planning team meeting. Um, administrative report, none at this time? Uh, none at this time. And correspondence we went over as part of that. So future business, we have the school committee goals workshop at 4.30 on August 26th. Again, that will be in the superintendent's conference room. Um, August 26th, we'll have a meeting um, at the school for school reopening that will be in person. We, there will be hybrid available, so some enemy is not going to be there. Let me know. I will be there in person, so I can run it. Because you do have the chair has to be there in person to run it. So if I'm virtual, somebody else has to run it. Um, we also have a meeting September 9th um, to talk about school opening and then September 23rd. The only other thing, Dr. Daly, do you want to talk about um, like the orientation or like in invite everybody to, what is it, the day after Labor Day is going to be the opening? And I assume you want me there again? Sure. Yeah. Our welcome back day is sure. on uh, September 4th. So typically the chair uh, gives some remarks, but everyone is invited to attend. Um, time, do you know what time that is? We, ha we haven't established that yet. Um, most likely it's uh, in the morning. I, at this time, I'm anticipating a similar schedule to last year, but I'm not exactly sure yet. So we, we will know that soon. I, I can communicate that schedule out via email. Okay. So September 4th in the morning, there'll be the opening if anybody wants to go to that. Um, okay. Anything else? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. You're muted. Mo I almost I almost got to the entire meeting. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> second. Motion by Tim. Second by Noel. Tim. Aye. Noel. No, I. Jen. Aye. I'm an I as well. Passes four zero. Thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy your summers.